Maybe you have always known your sun sign, but you just found out that you have a moon sign and a rising sign and you want to know what they mean. Or you're starting to look at astrological birth charts and you're not sure where to start. If this is you, you are certainly not alone and you are in the right place. Today we have with us a professional astrologer who has spent decades studying, practicing, and now teaching astrology. She is a very popular YouTube channel. She's a brilliant astrologer and just an awesome human being. And her name is Astro Lada. Lada makes learning the complex language of astrology simple, clear, and immediately applicable. And that is why I invited her here for this particular episode. Lada, welcome back to the Astrology Hub podcast. I am so happy you're here. Thank you so much for having me on again, Amanda. I absolutely love being on your podcast. I love you as a human being. <laughs> We've known each other for quite seven years now. We met once and I'm honored to be your guest. Yes. All right. Well, so, and, and today we're talking about something that, you know, I don't know if this happens to you, but oftentimes I'll meet people who don't know that much about astrology They'll know their sun sign. And then when I say, well, what's your moon and what's your rising or what's your big three? They're, they look at me like a deer in the headlights, like, what? There's more? So this is such a great starting point for people. And for anybody, if you're already deeply into astrology, it's always nice to hear how different astrologers interpret things, right? So this is for you too. But let's just talk with the talk about the fundamentals. So the sun, the moon, and rising, what they are, what they represent, and why they're so important. I'm so happy because when I started my YouTube channel in 2009, all the other channels, all the magazines, they would only give you the sun sign. And they didn't even call it sun sign. It would be Aries, Virgo. And I was like, I cannot work like that. I have to introduce people to sun, moon, or ascendant. And in all my videos, I started saying, if it's your sun, moon, or ascendant here, what it means. And it's very important. People want to know the subtle difference between the three of them because each one of those points, the sun, the moon, and ascendant, can be taken as a starting point of the horoscope, meaning you read the rest of the chart from that sign onward. Say if you're a Pisces sun, you can put the Pisces like being as your first sign your first house, and after that, Aries will be your second house and so on. But you can do it both sun, moon, and ascendant are the three self points in the horoscope. They are deeply representing yourself, different aspects of yourself. So every time you look at your horoscope, whether it's your sun, moon, or ascendant, or something transits there, something specifically to you will happen because other planets can represent other people in our lives, like Venus, can be women, Mercury can be even siblings or friends, Saturn can be parents of some sort as well. But Sun, Moon, and Ascendant are always one of the self factors, as we call it. And what is the difference? The Ascendant is the most specific of the three. Everyone born in April will be Aries. Most people born in April, the first 20 days will be their sun is in Aries when they're born. The sun changes its sign once every 30 days. The moon is the second most person. So the moon changes its sign every two and a half days. So even if you don't know your time of birth, you know the day, very likely you'd find out what your moon sign is. But it's actually more specific. It will tell you about your character even more than the sun sign. Because look how much faster the moon changes. It's not everyone in April is Aries or in uh, June is Gemini. This is every two days. It's a new moon sign. And then the ascendant sign is the most personal. Actually, in ancient Greece, or when they would ask someone, what is your sign? They'll tell their ascendant sign. <laughs> because this is the ascendant is what sign was rising on the eastern horizon at the moment, the minute, the hour you were born. The Because we know the sun, uh, the earth spins. So in every 24 hours, it spins, and on the eastern horizon, each of the 12 signs come within those 24 hours. So for about two and a half, sometimes two, sometimes two and a half hours, the ascendant changes its sign. And this is your most specific imprint. And the ascendant is known in esoteric astrology to be the point of entrance of the soul. From the east, the soul enters 
you know, maybe it's not so <laughs> east west, but somehow this is how mystics describe it that the soul enters from the eastern horizon, even if the sun is not rising, then maybe it's midnight when you're born, maybe it's midday, but from the east, because the new comes from the east, and we know in the west is where it dies, <laughs> where it goes away. So the east is the, uh, the direction of new beginnings where the sun rises, and the souls enter from then. The moment it enters through a certain sign, this becomes your life path. So the ascendant sign is the most personal, and it determines your life path because it determines all the other houses in the horoscope. Say you are born with Taurus ascendant. So maybe it was afternoon. The sun was starting to set a little bit, you know. But at that moment... The sign Taurus is on the eastern horizon and your soul enters into your body. This is the first breath you take. Actually, the soul, the, the first moment, the first breath you take with the breath, the program for your life is being um, imprinted with the first breath of, uh, of the child. And you absorb all the vibrations of where planets are and it becomes your imprint from which you can start developing onwards. But say you enter here from Taurus and it, it it's like a picture of the sky at this moment. It sets, determines all the other houses and the houses show different life areas. So if someone is born with Taurus ascendant, their second house will be Gemini. Money will be very Geminian in approach to money. Their siblings will be Cancer house. Their family will be Leo house and so on. It sets the houses. It sets the specific life themes. That's why the ascendant is, if you go to a professional astrological reading, they'll all look at your horoscope from the ascendant sign and the houses from then on. And they would actually pay attention where the sun and the moon are situated when you are born in regards to this ascendant sign. Is it here? Is it here, the moon? Where is the sun? And they'll determine the houses. Uh, say someone born with Taurus, with the moon in the fifth house, this will show that this person, and what is the moon? So the ascendant is the most, the path is the most fated of it, that of the three signs, sun, moon, or ascendant, is the most, let's say, set in stone. Because when you're born, you're born in a certain family, with certain parents, with certain genetics, with certain predispositions. This is all something that is determined by the ascendant, your appearance, a lot of your personality as well, temperament, the physical body is very much the ascendant. Not just the looks, but your whole construction. For the ascendant, you can see someone's, to someone's ascendant, if it's no planets there to give different influence, they'll have very specific appearance. For example, Taurus ascendant people, they'll have this kind of uh, voluptuousness, uh, lips bigger, this sensuality, this richness to the look, this cheekiness, maybe a more rounded nose, this... Uh, there is this Mother Earth blossoming. Someone with Aquarius rising, the human sign. They'll have a very humane look, very intelligent look. Me and Amanda and Aquarius rising. <laughs> there is this, you know, there's very, usually the forehead is big. So the ascendant will give you, even the appearance, if there is no planet there, the, if there is a planet, it will totally color the appearance. So it will be the things that the most fated is the ascendant. The path that you're walking here, you know how there's things that predetermined for us, what family, because from whatever your ascendant is, the fourth house will be what your family is born into, what partners you're going to attract. This determines a lot of the, they say we have 75, 50% is predeter predetermined, 25% is dependent on the reaction of others. And 25% is our free will, which is usually our response to what is predetermined. But we do have 25% free will. And I'll show you that the free will comes from the sun. But the ascendant is one of those probably 50% that <laughs> is predetermined. You cannot change a family, your looks. Well, we can now, but <laughs> those genetics there, the path of life you're going to walk in uh, and uh, the environments around you that you're going to encounter. So. Usually when you look at, listen to your horoscope on the internet or whatever, and you listen from your ascendant, it is the part that it's probably most likely to manifest on the material level. Again, we cannot be fully always that 
every prediction will be correct because the houses move sometimes, depends what degree of your ascendant is and so on. But still, it's very important for people always to check the ascendant sign. If they only if they know the exact time, hour, minute of birth, of course, the place. You see how specific the ascendant is? You cannot see the ascendant without the place of birth, the hour and the minute, because it can change in five minutes and you might be a different ascendant. And your whole path in life and appearance would be very different. I even have charts of twins who are born three minutes apart. Three minutes apart, but they look very different. One is very white. The other one is much more darker. The life paths became very different because within those three minutes, the ascendant role uh, changed and it went from Sagittarius to Capricorn. And the one became uh, uh, basically uh, uh, much more Capricornian in nature. She became a lawyer <laughs> and she was like the darker color, slimmer. The other one, the Sagittarius, she's lighter with her ascendant, everything else is the same for them. All the rest of the planets, they do not move within those three, four minutes. The Sagittarius one started traveling. She became much more of a free spirit, uh, uh, went way more into other kind of more humanistic direction. So you see how minutes are so important. <laughs> the ascendant can change, you know. Sorry, Lada, this is something we've been doing throughout the whole show that if anybody is confused about, they would be driven mad by now. But I keep saying rising and you say ascendant. It's the same okay. thing, right? Yeah. It's the same thing. So the, it's interchange. It's interchangeable, essentially. Um, yeah, and so based I, on the horizon. That's based it. on the horizon. What is rising or ascending on the horizon at the moment of your birth? Couple yeah. questions here, Lada. So- Number one, if you don't know your birth time, is that when you, do you recommend to people, first of all, I know there's chart rectification, which is a whole thing. If you're really, if you don't know your birth time, you can't find your birth time. Absolutely. Then there's a path you can go down called chart rectification. And there's certain astrologers who specialize in that, which is basically helping you find that birth time by working backwards. You can find it down I've checked with this professional dowser. I'll not tell him the time births of people I know for sure. And he'll do us to the minute. That's an amazing suggestion, Lada. Thank you. I, nobody has said that before. I love that though. So dowsing, chart rectification. Kinesiology as well, muscle testing. Right, muscle testing. Do you do, um, do you, but when people really just don't know. So, so for example, we have a free report that anyone can go download right now that is about your big three. And it'll, it'll help you get a reading on your sun, moon, and rising. You can go to astrologyhub.com slash big three. And that's three spelled out, T-H-R-E-E. -E. If you don't know your birth time, you can just put in 12 p.m., right? Is that is that sort of the standard? Put 12 p.m. in yes. and then see if you can hunt down that birth time to get even more accurate. But the sun and the moon is going to be, is going to be, well, the sun will be accurate. Shake your moon sign because it's the second most personal. And the moon sign is the astral. The ascendant is the physical. The moon, it now goes to the astral, the emotional level. The moon is the astral influences. And it's a bit, we don't have much free will there as well. <laughs> because the moon is connected with the subconscious, with the emotions, with the how we were programmed in our family. So not only in the family, but also in previous lifetimes. The moon is connected from previous lifetime. Experiences were most comfortable in previous lifetime. Someone with moon in Scorpio conjunct Saturn or Pluto, they were probably persecuted, killed in past lifetime. They had some. And this will repeat in the early lifetime, maybe a family that is with more intense experiences and so on. But we usually recapitulate with the moon in our early childhood environment, environments that we were familiar with from past lifetimes before. Uh, and that's the moon. And it's something that's very difficult to change, to change how you feel about yourself, to change how uh, moon shows you how can you self-soothe your emotions when things are tense. If anything, the most important planet to have good is the moon. <laughs> because someone with a strong moon, they're very adaptable. They can emotionally attune to whatever changes are happening around them. Then they stay sane. When the moon is very hurt, you can have mental health issues. You can have anxiety, nervousness. And the moon is also connected to the health, more to the female health and to the menstrual and reproductive organs in some ways. Uh, but also any psychosomatic illnesses that come because of stress, of emotional situation. 
But the moon is probably, if you're a woman, definitely check your moon sign always. Because women are more emotional beings. The moon, if, if you are born, doesn't matter what you identify with. If you are born with female sexual organs as a child, uh, the moon will always influence you very strong. And as, and even if you're not a woman, the moon will influence you very strong if you're born at night, which means that to be born at night, you know how the chart has a line here in the middle when you look, astro.com or whatever. If the sun is anywhere below this, it means the sun has set when you're born or hasn't risen yet. It's below the horizon. So check your chart. If there is a line where the sun is here, you're born at night. If the moment the sun is above, crosses this line, the ascendant, descendant line, you are day born. So people born at night, so the sun is here, the moon becomes the more important planet of the two, the sun and the moon. It becomes more potent for you. For example, I was born at night, so I feel my moon sign extremely powerfully. Uh, as a child, like everyone would look at me and say, are you little something? <laughs> and because my moon is, it becomes the light for you. Uh, because everyone has light. It's the sun or the moon. If you're born at night, the light for you is the moon. If you're born at day, the light for you is the sun. And it makes you more proactive. Born at night, people are a bit more, let's say, on the inside. While born at day on the young side, in and young, you know. I know that you, Amanda, are born during the day when the sun was rising already. So your sun is above horizon. You have a bit more of the solar cord. The sun becomes very strongly pronounced in you. This Capricorn qualities that you have will be very visible for you. I know that your moon is very powerful. I mean, you have moon in Gemini. I can also feel it. But the way your whole life is organized, you're so structured, so organized, so professional with everything. You are a solar being i'm a lunar being <laughs> so that's very important so if you're born during the day like you your sun sign will be extremely important to check in your predictions and many times you identify a lot with the predictions from your sun sign always check the ascendant sign that's non-negotiable this is your kind of determined path but with the sun sign if you're day born or if you're a man for men uh the sun sign, because it's a masculine planet, they tend to identify more with it. And women tend to identify strongly with the uh, moon sign as well, because it's just the maybe not women in the West anymore, <laughs> you know, because it's kind of it's the more receptive. It's your subconscious women that are very busy all the time that are always competing into the world. Uh, they kind of. They cannot fully get in touch with the lunar side sometimes. But for, for women, it's very important. And that's why uh, those lunar uh, rituals that you do, they're very good for women. All women respond to the moon. So they they if, if they set up the intentions on new moon and release all things on full moon, definitely uh, women can <laughs> benefit a lot more. Men who are more sensitive, men who are more in touch with their feminine side, with the mm. cycle of nature. So this mm. is the moon and it's kind of because it describes the programming we had from little, the environment, you know, do you feel comfortable in, some people feel really comfortable when there's tension around, when there's stress. <laughs> and if there are two you say moon with Mars, moon in a more masculine fiery sign. When things are calm, they go and they would unconsciously create some drama just so they can get some of the action. Or someone who has moon in Taurus, say with Venus, if the situation gets stressful, these people do not like it and they would never, and you um, unconsciously, the moon unconsciously attracts to it whatever its qualities are. Um, that's why, some people's life will be always turbulent because that's what they feel comfortable in, while others' lives will be always like smooth and easy because they had a very maybe smooth and easy and easygoing programming from little and from past lifetimes. And they'll be much more peaceful emotionally. But definitely the prediction from your moon sign will, it's again, it's not so much free will there. It's something that's almost programmed to you. You can change it. 
you can if you have a moon with a lot of hard aspects or in a difficult position, it's work usually through psychology. The moon responds really well to music, to psychology, to working with the feelings, with the emotions, to, uh, getting in touch with your feminine side. Uh, but the moon that's with a lot of hurt aspect needs to self-soothe. They have problems self-soothing. They were not soothed as children. Maybe they were not breastfed. Maybe they were left to cry themselves to sleep. Maybe worse things, you know. But uh, we need all to learn healthy ways of self-soothing, and that's the moon. And mm. you have a moon in areas, a way for you to self-soothe might be to go for jogging in our areas. <laughs> might be to punch a back. To that, that can release. So if you have a moon in Gemini, it might be to start journaling or reading a book or talking with someone about your feelings. But if you 100%. have a moon in the middle, you might want to dance or you might want to have a one dramatic cry or go out partying or something. You know, everyone needs to find their own way to self-soothe that are healthy according to the moon sign. And many times people tell me, you know what, my moon sign if I check my moon sign, the prediction is so correct. Usually those are usually people born at night, but definitely actually Vedic astrology says that after the age of 50, you can just look at your horoscope only from the moon sign because they say that the physical, which is the ascendant, starts waning down after 15 ascents. It's not so important in the consciousness of the person. And they start identifying much more with the prediction from the moon sign after that. Uh, even till 50, they always read the chart in Vedic astrology from the moon and from the ascendant. And the moon sign prediction will be the most personal for most people because these are your feelings. You know, maybe from your ascendant, transits are happening that says, oh, you're going to uh, move or something. And you're really kind of uh, moving somewhere. But from your moon sign, the prediction says that you're going to feel extremely, uh, you're going to meet someone, for example, that is emotionally going to impact you. And you only feel, you even don't notice that you've moved physically, you notice that you've met someone, something important, because it's your feelings that are being impacted. You know, something might be happening in your external world, which is usually what the ascendant prediction is. But if you don't respond to it emotionally, yeah, it happens, it goes. But the things that really hits you positively or negatively is when your feelings are impacted very strongly. That's why the moon prediction is so important and the moon sign and the moon house position. And then we get to the sun sign. That changes once every 30 days. Everyone just knows their sun sign. No, I'm Gemini. Well, that's now the free will we have. The 25% of free will it can be manifested through the sun. But you know that it's hardest to actually takes the longest to start showing the higher vibration of your sun sign. Even from little people can say, oh, look at you, you're so serious. You're such a Capricorn. You can show those things of the sun. But usually you need at least to be 30 and over. Uh, and you grow into your sun qualities. You are here basically to embody the sun qualities. The moon qualities come very naturally to one. One is programmed with them. One is, <laughs> you know, the family environment, whatever. The mother is the moon, as we know as well. Uh, the ascendant is set and done. You're born with these genetics, with this life path, you know. And the sun goes not to the feelings anymore like the moon or the physical like the ascendant. The sun goes to the mental worlds. So it's the higher astrals or, or the Deva Chana, as we call it, is the place of spirit. The moon is the soul. The sun is the spirit. And that's where we have the free will. The free will, how to think. <laughs> so that's where our free will comes because the sun is a masculine planet that is connected to conscious thinking. The moon is also connected to thinking, but the unconscious. Your moods, how you feel about things generally but how you rationally think about things, how you, your own individual, unique, creative thought is the sun. So the things where you can change in your horoscope starts with the sun, the position of the sun in your house, in your, if, for example, if you're really not liking your life, the circumstances, uh, and it's usually the ascendant moon connected and so on, focus on the sun sign, what sign it is in, what house is it, it is in? 
what aspects it has. Start with the easy, the sign of the sun, the house of the sun, because this is your exit out of those 75% conditioning. <laughs> because with the free will that the sun gives us, you know, even in religion, we say God gave humans free will, and that comes through the solar spark of individual creative mind. And the more you feed that sun, and you feed that sun by, you know, focusing on the sign it is in, on developing its higher qualities, uh, and the sun is a masculine planet, so you have to be proactive. It doesn't come to you. You go after that and try to be the better version of those things. The more you develop them, the more free will you start having. It doesn't mean planets will still influence you astrologically or whatever, but you have, you choose how to think about those things, how to see them philosophically, how to interpret them. This is the solar quality. And what to create, you know, we say we're co-creators. Well, most of us live like we're not co-creators, that we cannot create our own reality. And till recent, till, till a few hundred years ago, uh, astrologers, called, uh, you know, they only looked from ascendant and moon sign. But only in the last few hundred years, people are starting to act more from their sun sign because they are becoming more and more individuated and independent. The moon thinking is a tribal thinking. Whatever your family taught you, whatever the environment, whatever you were brainwashed or programmed or, or nurtured to, to feel, to think, the ascendant is even more, you know, it's kind of like your ancestral uh, genetic predisposition. The sun is your unique weight, how you can think differently, uniquely. The sun is the most unique energy in your horoscope. So that's where if you want a way out of a stuck situation, you don't like your life, focus on the qualities of the sun, focus on that house, and you'll have more and more free will. Can you give us an example of that? I love what you're saying, Lada. And a lot of this is, is sort of unique to the way, I haven't heard astrologers explain this so clearly as you are right now. And some of these nuances that you're bringing in, I also haven't heard a lot of astrologers talking about. So it's it's really fascinating. When you say, if you're in a challenging situation in your life, mm -hmm. the way out or the, the part that you have the control over really is what you're saying. Like the part where you get to be in a co-creative relationship <laughs> with the universe is through your son. Okay, so I can give you an example. So this is a chart of a woman who was very stuck and didn't know what to do with her life. And uh, usually you now when we feel stuck, we kind of feel like victims and we feel that things are happening to us and we cannot co-create or create whatever reality we want. So her son is in the first degree of Sagittarius. How she changed her life? She moved to another country, Sagittarius. <laughs> mm -hmm. And every time she started acting on the free will of the sun and the sun is the co-creative planet, the more you act, Curses in Sagittarius, she started traveling, first moved to a new country, Sagittarius. Then she started traveling. And now every time that she feels that things are not going her way or that she feels she's losing her power, she goes traveling. She takes a short trip or whatever. She uses the Sagittarius for it. Then she became a teacher. And she's a teacher to 1 million people. She has 1 million uh, people that she teaches. They're all foreigners as well. <laughs> so she again wow. followed the bliss of the sun. And the sun is in her sixth house, if we look at Placidus. She's a workaholic. <laughs> she dedicated her whole life to her work. And through her work, she came from a very poor family. She came from a very kind of traditional upbringing. And she created a totally different life that she's fully, she feels very empowered. She's and, and her best life was the solar quality to travel all over the world to teach and for, for it to be her work. And she just kind of di dived into the sun house and into the sun sign, and all the blockages in her life started disappearing one by one. My that son, is for example, is in the third house, and my life only started getting better because before that, I was also. I was born as I was, uh, you know, I was kind of even homeless. I had even addictions. I was an uh, immigrant in a foreign country without uh, documents to work. It was very hard. And the moment I started focused on that sun sign, uh, mine was here in the third house. 
And I said, okay, this is my free will. What do I do? Third house media. I said, I'll open the YouTube channel. <laughs> and because I was trying before that to do astrology, not through media means. I was just trying going door to door, whatever, never worked. And I opened the YouTube channel, whatever your son is, try to work through it. Even if you don't become world famous there, you don't have to. You'd fulfill, you'd start co-creating with God, with whatever you're ma- meant to co-create. You have more free will there to manifest whatever you want. Uh, and it's fascinating that when people listen to their sun sign prediction, many times they'll super resonate with it because this is what they want. What they, they because the sun is your free will, so they're, it, really, it doesn't always mean it happens, but it's on their mental level. It's on their head. And they're excited. And it's something soon is connected to the future. They're usually making plans for that. They really want it. Oftentimes, a prediction from the sun side is something that you really want, you're excited about, or that it's really much in your mind and you feel really important for you to work over that. For example, if Saturn is chanting the second house from your sun, um, even if you're not in some financial problem, you might be like really thinking deeply that it's time now to save money, to be more uh, financially savvy, to be more masterful with your money and so on. So I would always look at the trend. Sometimes I love to combine. For example, say the, uh, there is a transit of, let's say it again, of Saturn in your 12th house from the sun. Let's say Saturn is transiting in the 12th house from your sun. But in your ascendant sign, it is saying that Saturn is transiting, let's say, your ascendant sign might be uh, Aquarius. Okay, let's say that again. So from your ascendant sign, Saturn is in the second house, which means something with money problems or you having to solve a, uh, or something about saving money. Or uh, And from your sun sign, Saturn is in the 12th house, which is connected to spending, to ending something, completing something. So I like to combine the meaning of the ascendant and the sun for a full of you. And so, for example, because I'm having this, what now I can talk about. Second house is also food. So my Saturn is in my second house. I'm super obsessed with cleaning up my diet. Saturn can give you the ability to say no, to limit yourself with food and how you eat. And for me, it's like I'm cooking every day, very focused and so on. Uh, and But the 12th house from the sun is about ending something. So I'm ending old ways of eating and habits and introducing new ones. Also, I'm spending a lot of money. 12th house is expenses. Second house is money. They're connected. So combine second and 12th with Saturn. And I'm spending a lot of money on something that I'm investing into. That it is because there is the 12th house energy to spend and so on. So I always love to combine. For someone, Saturn might be transiting in the 7th from Ascendant, in the 10th from the Sun. And you can combine both and you'll see that Something is happening in your career that is very much connected to a partnership. So combine them both, you know, <laughs> even with the moon, if you can add an extra layer. Uh, and that's how you give you get the most precise predictions usually. Because <laughs> mm. one, and as I said, the sun sign is often something that uh, if people have your sun sign, if you have especially multiple planets in the same sign, say your Capricorn, but maybe you might have the moon, uh, sorry, Mercurial Venus there as well. Both. Yes, I do. So for you, Saturn can even resonate much more for your predictions than the ascendant sign. If you have a stellium, which means another one or two planets, at least with the sun, it becomes more potent than the ascendant. I've seen it over and over. Mm -hmm. Plus you're day born. So you're born during the day, the sun becomes your light. So many times the prediction for Capricorn for you, so looking at Capricorn as the first house, resonate a lot. And Mm. even more sometimes than from the Ascendant. I have four planets in my sun sign, Mercury, Venus, Mars, the sun. For me, the sun sign works so well. (laughs) Yeah, same here. Same here. Actually, when I read the rising, it sometimes feels resonant, but the sun pretty much always does. Yeah. Okay, so this is fascinating, Lada. And there's what you have showed us here is that there is so much information to be gleaned from just these three placements in oh, your chart. 
because full reading. Just with one full on reading. Reading. Yes. So have you, I mean, with your students and with your own practice, have you ever just done a reading based on someone's sun, moon, and rising? Is that enough to That's give them? I start, when I teach, because now I predominantly teach, we always start at the beginning just with analyzing. I'll give you an example how this can be done. Simplest thing you can do to make like a summary of the three, look at their sign. Are they in female or male signs? So we separate them in male and female signs, maybe like yin and yang. The male signs are Aries, Gemini, Leo, Libra, Sagittarius, Aquarius. The female signs are Taurus, Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Capricorn, Pisces. So see, do you have all three? Someone can have all three in just masculine or all three in just feminine. This will show so much about the person already. Mm. For example, a woman with all three in masculine signs, like I have. Ascendant in Aquarius, Sun in Aries, Moon in Leo. And then you add another factor. Is it day birth or night birth? I showed you. Is the sun below the horizon or above? For me, thanks God, <laughs> I'm a night birth. So it gives me out of the four factors, one feminine. But the other three, Sun, Moon and Rising, all masculine. What would that mean for a woman? With, should be Doesn't necessarily mean she would look masculine. She would be one going careers, businesses, <laughs> can't keep her at home, active person, uh, someone who is initiate, these are masculine qualities like initiative. That's really treasured nowadays. For example, Amanda is ascendant in Aquarius, one masculine, sun in Capricorn, one feminine, moon in Gemini, two masculine, day chart, Mm -hmm. Three masculine and one feminine. <laughs> the sun is in. <laughs> it's so, so yeah. funny when you were saying earlier that the moon uh, work that we do at Astrology Hub is so important. It has been one of the main conduits for me into more of my feminine side. So I, I absolutely relate with that. That that we actually, if we want to balance it, and we're and we're super, you know, masculine then it, it takes a little more effort. It takes a little more intention. Mm -hmm. It takes a little more like actually um, putting some some focus effort, on it. Effort, consciously. Yes. Because when there's too much masculine energy, you don't know how to relax. It's so go, go, go. <laughs> it's great for success and for such things. But then how do you self-soothe yourself and you do it through anything that is a feminine vibration? Looking at the moon only can bring yeah. people, the women with too many masculine signs calming down. But you see, because you have more masculinity, you organize things, you get things done, you have ideas, you initiate them. Uh, of course, you have to take care of relaxing. But also for you, when things don't go well, so some, whether it's a man or a woman, if they're predominantly masculine, sun, moon or ascendant and they chart, uh, they have to... When things don't go well for them, they should not sit around and just, they should get up and go and change things because this is the masculine energy. They're the ones to get themselves out. You're not feeling well, go for a run. Do mm. something. Mm. Well, opposite, if you have majority feminine, you're born at night, moon in Cancer, sun in Virgo, you know, uh, ascendant, maybe might be in the ma masculine sign, but you see majority in feminine, these people, when things don't go well or whatever, or if they want, they have to wait till they feel better because the feminine energy succeed in life after it starts feeling better. The masculine mm -hmm. energy is not feeling good. It will, it gets active to change it. Feminine mm -hmm. energy, wait, say you break up with someone and you have mostly feminine energy. Don't fire your masculine. You can go rebounds, whatever. You can go and start a new relationship and we'll be okay. But the feminine energy, wait it out, recover till you start feeling better. And people with the feminine energy, even if they're men, wait out for the opportunities to present to yourself and then react. This is the lunar energy of receiving. Doesn't mean be someone who does nothing. Wait out for the opportunities to open to yourself and then respond and you intuitively respond to the better option. For example, my husband is, he's ascendant in Libra, that's the only, and his son is there, but his moon is in Taurus, his son is in Cancer, so he has two feminine, and ascendant is masculine only, 
and the sun is, you know, in the during the daytime. But I see a lot more receptivity. Things happen much more smoothly with people with feminine energies, uh, and there's less drama. But also they are, of course, you'd see such a man with more feminine of those three, four elements. They're just gentler. They're in touch with their feminine side. Doesn't mean they're, you know, camp or something. It's it's calmer, softer energy. Things come to them. What well, well, we with the fiery masculine, we have to go and get ourselves. You know, my man is a, a Taurus sun and Taurus rising as well, and oh. it's a, absolutely he's always the one making sure that I take enough downtime and I rest and I take care of myself. But it's like <laughs> he has to literally coach me on that almost on like a daily basis. So, absolutely, I mean, a lot of so basically, <laughs> day night, masculine, feminine. What is the actual, like the Zodiac qualities as well? That goes into the equation. And then it, any other element of the sun, moon, and rising that really paints, colors the picture? Oh, well, check out if you have a mutable, fixed, or a cardinal. So mutable, fixed, mutable signs are here. Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius, Gemini, fixed, are Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, and Scorpio and Cardinal, uh, Cancer, Aries, Libra, and Capricorn. So if you have a predominant, say, uh, in this case, we're looking similar ascendant. Say you have Sun and Ascendant in Cardinal sign. You can have them each in different. One fixed, one mutable, one Cardinal, which is kind of more balanced. A person with different modalities. They can be present long-term with the fixity. They can... Uh, change into new gears with the cardinal. They can also adapt to changing circumstances with the mutable. But if you see someone more, let's say, one-dimensional or cardinal, what is good for cardinal signs? If you have a lot of cardinalities in the moon and rising, these are starters, movers, shakers, but they do better abroad. Cardinal signs, because they... They, they do better what? Abroad. To, abroad? To be, to, yes. To okay. Live. Ancient text said, like, if you have many cardinal planets, they, you do better abroad in a foreign country or far away from where you're born. Not far away, but at least not in your town. Or, mm. uh, and they need to move. And such cardinal people, you look at them in five years, they have a totally new lifestyle. Five years later, new job, new country, new boyfriend. <laughs> they start, they have a lot of new starts in life. Even in their 60s, they can start a new, that doesn't scare them. And it's okay. But there is this consistency there. Fixity, you go there 20 years later, the same job, you know, they're just expanding, continuing growing. They're the pillars of society, rocks of society. Uh, and it's very good if you have a child with a lot of fixity, sun or moon, and at least two of them, teach them good habits from little because they change their habits very hard. <laughs> they teach them good habits, they'll stick them for life. How to eat healthy, how to brush their teeth, whatever. The, the fix, they have problem changing, but they have the know-how almost like give them a direction. The cardinals give the direction. The fixed will follow this direction like a steam train and never end. They usually are the ones that implement things. And then the mutables, they also are like traveling. <laughs> if you have more mutability, there is uh, the mutable signs are very much about learning. If you have a lot of mutability, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, they're a bit, they call them go with the flow. They're very adaptable. In the ancient Vedic astrology, mutable signs are a mixture of cardinal and fixed qualities. So cardinal is one extreme. They start, they're like that at the beginning, cardinals. At the end, they're like that. Fixed, they're like that. Mutables, they don't start well, but they are very good at, ending things that uh, they get better at the end. <laughs> uh, and mutables are the ones that go and see where there is a problem. They, they're the ones that can fix and adjust things. So the cardinal would come up with the idea, would create it, the, the fix would implement it. And the mutable go and look where the issue is. <laughs> For example, they'll say, okay, we can improve on that. And you have the three, you have fixed ascendant, cardinal, sun, mutable moon, which is great. I, I, you have... From the three outlooks, you can begin 
you can carry on, you can end or improve on mutable science. They improve that's why mutable science. They love the all life learners. If you have strong mutability, just study, 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 study. <laughs> and they learn to, they don't start things from scratch. They take something that's existing and make it better or improve it in some way. So these are kind of the qualities I would give to the three. Lada, I love uh, getting to experience a little bit of your teaching. And I'm super excited that you're going to be an inner circle teacher with us come Cancer Lunation this year, July 2024. And you're going to be teaching a mastery class for our members on using house rulers when interpreting the chart for extra dimensions. Can you tell us just a little bit about what our inner circle members are going to learn in this mastery class? Uh, so basically, I'm going to go through the 12 signs. You can use it on sun sign, on ascendant, on moon sign. I usually like to look, definitely look at it from ascendant sign. And you can definitely translate it to sun and moon. But we'll go through each of the 12 ascendants and see how the life themes are connected. Because we're going to use traditional astrology here, but for each of the houses of each ascendant or sign, there is usually the same planet that rules two houses. Say for Aquarians, it's traditionally ruled by Saturn. So for Aquarians, the first and the 12th house themes all their life will be connected. That's why Aquarians people rising in particular, the path that they tread on is a bit esoteric because the rule of the first and the 12th is the same. And that's why they often end up in foreign places or far away. 12th house is far away places. And they are, the, they can feel at home because it's part of their path and destiny in foreign places, even in <laughs> extraterrestrial ships, whatever. So they're, they're connected to the 12th house. That's why Aquarius is a very spiritual sign. The same planet that rules them, rules their 12th house. Another thing, Aquarius, their money, second house, is the same ruler as their network. So for Aquarians to make money, they need to have a network. Their money is very much connected to who they know, who they connect with, to somehow the society. So I'll go through each of the houses, how they're connected by rulers. You don't need to know anything. You don't need to know your whole chart. Just knowing your ascendant sign from moon sign will give you some ideas how to be more successful in life if something is not going well. For example, if again going with Aquarius, because we're both Aquarius rising, <laughs> if you're having money problems, start connecting with like-minded, go online at groups, whatever, maybe offer your services online on groups at the 11th house. So you might be introduced to someone, introduced to someone, or if, uh, if it's connected, if there's problem in your friendships, you can't find friends, you're lonely, this is the 11th house. Uh, and it's a really painful topic for you there. But second house, you might be, can be food or whatever, change your way of eating and it's your teeth. It's a simple remedy. So you can, for example, do some dental work. And I know it doesn't sound connected, but it is for you. Improve how you eat, clean up your eating, or be financially more. And this will start improving your friendships because the same planet rules the two houses. Or whichever one doesn't work well, because there might be some difficult planets in the other house, whatever. You go to the one that feels less painful for you, do the remedies there and the things, and it will start to help so because they're energetically connected and you might feel wow. like how is friendships and money or someone can have children fifth house and the same planet ruling the second house actually they might become they might be like i don't want to have children maybe i should not have children but if it's the same connection actually after children those people their money can take off and be much more financially successful the themes are connected we're going to talk about how just by knowing your ascendant sign you can see what themes can be connected to you so that would be fun. <laughs> I'm having this experience, Lada, of falling in love with astrology again, oh. just, to, just to have so much information in this astrological chart. In this moment of your birth, you brought up in the very beginning, you brought up the breath and how the breath activates that imprint. And it's just fascinating to see how, how many links, how many uh, nuances, how how many layers there are that just continue to get unpacked. And unpacked. <laughs> it's so it's endless and it's endless and it's just so beautiful. Your Gemini be. mind, your Gemini moon must be. Oh. And, you know why yeah. I do what I do? I mean, it's just like I get to I get to be in that place where I feel so nurtured all the time because I just get to keep learning from amazing, brilliant people like you. So. 
Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of our inner circle. I'm so excited to have you for the first time as a teacher in the inner circle. That mastery class sounds amazing. I can't wait. And I hope that all of you found this helpful. And I hope that it did what it did for me as well, which is just to, to unpack so many different layers and just three simple placements in your chart. You can just focus on those for a long time and get a lot of information. And at the end of the day, it's all about falling in love with who you are, living and expressing that blueprint as best as you can. One of the things when you were talking earlier about the moon, for me, it's been just knowing that I'm a Gemini moon, understanding what a Gemini moon needs and giving myself permission to give me that. Because mm -hmm. before I would feel bad that, that when I was emotionally triggered or when there was something happening, I would need to talk to someone. I felt needy yeah. for needing that. And now it's like, actually, no. That's what you are self-soothing with. You yes. Are yourself. Yes. yes. And it doesn't always have to be the same person. So that person doesn't have yeah. to get you know tired of, of listening to whatever it is. But that I just, I need a friend or I need someone to talk about it with. And that is perfectly okay. And my Sagittarius man needs to go out in nature and have his alone time for right. a moment, you know, his moon. And, and I don't need to take that personally. Like that means yeah. something, you know, so understanding these things about ourselves and about each other allows us to support and nurture and love them the same way that we we're more capable of doing for ourselves. So it's just, it's all amazing. Thank you, Lada, for being here, for yeah, sharing your wisdom. Yeah, for, for teaching, for just being such a beautiful presence and and for your commitment to astrology and your own education and learning and then your willingness to share that with people. It's really beautiful. Thank you. It's my honor and pleasure. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right. And thank you, everybody out there for being a part of our community, for tuning into this episode. If you haven't gotten the Sun, Moon and Rising Report, make sure you check that out. Astrologyhub.com slash big three spelled out. And um, you can check out the inner circle and maybe join us for Lada's month. All the links that you need are going to be in the show notes. And I will look, look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Take care, everyone.